It was a cold winter evening, and my parents had decided to celebrate their anniversary with a romantic dinner at their favorite restaurant. As much as I wanted to join them, I was swamped with college assignments and had to stay behind. The house felt unusually quiet without their cheerful banter, and I had settled on the living room couch, wrapped in a cozy blanket with a book in hand. The clock ticked away the minutes, and I was engrossed in the world of fiction when I heard a faint, eerie creaking noise emanating from the depths of our home, the basement. My heart skipped a beat, and a shiver ran down my spine. The realization hit me like a ton of bricks. I was completely alone in the house. At first, I tried to convince myself that it was just the old house settling, making its usual sounds. But the unsettling feeling lingered, and I couldn't ignore it any longer. I closed my book, placing it gently on the coffee table, and listened intently. The creaking continued, slow and deliberate, like footsteps. My imagination began to run wild, conjuring up all sorts of dreadful scenarios. Summoning courage, I reluctantly pushed the blanket aside and tiptoed towards the basement door. My footsteps were nearly silent on the plush carpeted stairs, and I clutched the banister for support. The dim light bulb at the bottom of the stairwell barely illuminated the room below, casting long, eerie shadows. As I descended cautiously, the frigid air from the basement hit me like an icy wall. I glanced towards the basement window, and my heart sank. It was wide open, allowing the freezing night air to rush in. Panic surged within me, and my fingers trembled as I reached for the switch to turn on the basement's overhead light. The room gradually revealed itself, and the unsettling scene sent shivers down my spine. There, in the far corner of the basement, stood a tall, shadowy figure. My breath caught in my throat, and a wave of terror washed over me. I tried to make out any distinguishing features, but all I could discern was the ominous silhouette. With my heart pounding in my chest, I managed to muster a shaky voice. Who are you? I asked, my words barely more than a whisper. The figure remained motionless for a moment, as if contemplating a response. Then, slowly and deliberately, he turned towards me, his movements deliberate. My breath caught in my throat as the dim light revealed his face, a grotesque mask of malice, twisted into a sinister grin. Time seemed to freeze in that moment. I was paralyzed with fear, unable to tear my gaze away from this intruder's terrifying visage. Every instinct in my body screamed at me to run, to escape this nightmare, but my feet felt rooted to the ground. Then, with an unsettling slowness, he began to advance towards me. My heart pounded in my chest, and I could feel the adrenaline surging through my veins. Panic took over and I finally found the strength to break free from my trance-like state. Without thinking, I turned and sprinted back up the stairs, taking them two at a time. My only thought was to reach the safety of the main floor, to put as much distance as possible between myself and that sinister presence in the basement. My breath came in ragged gasps as I reached the top of the stairs, and I slammed the basement door shut behind me, locking it with trembling hands. My next instinct was to call for help. I fumbled for my phone and dialed 911, my voice shaking as I recounted the terrifying encounter to the dispatcher. They assured me that officers were on their way and instructed me to stay on the line until they arrived. Time seemed to crawl as I huddled in the living room, clutching the phone like a lifeline. Every creak of the floorboards, every gust of wind outside, sent my heart racing. I couldn't shake the image of that sinister intruder from my mind, and fear gripped me like a vice. Finally, the sound of sirens pierced the silence, and I breathed a sigh of relief. The police had arrived. I rushed to the front door, my legs still trembling, and greeted the officers with a flood of emotions. They were calm and professional, assuring me that they would thoroughly investigate the basement. With cautious steps, they descended into the depths of the house their flashlights cutting through the darkness like beacons of hope. Minutes felt like hours as I waited anxiously, my nerves on edge. It wasn't long before they returned, their expressions grave. The lead officer informed me that the basement was now secure, and they had found no sign of the intruder. They assured me that they would patrol the area throughout the night and encouraged me to stay with a neighbor or friend until my parents returned. I readily agreed, 
not wanting to spend another moment alone in that house. As the officers left, I hastily packed a small bag and made my way to a neighbor's house, where I was greeted with warmth and sympathy. My parents, upon hearing the news, cut short their anniversary celebration and rushed back home. They were visibly shaken and relieved to find me safe and unharmed. In the days that followed, the incident haunted my thoughts. Who was that intruder, and what had they wanted? The police investigation yielded no answers, and it seemed that the shadowy figure had disappeared without a trace. I couldn't help but wonder what might have happened if I had stayed in the basement a moment longer. That night, as I lay in my bed in the safety of our home, I couldn't escape the feeling that the darkness in the basement still held secrets, secrets that may never be uncovered. The memory of that chilling encounter would forever remain etched in my mind, a constant reminder of the night I came face to face with a sinister presence lurking in the depths of our home. It was a summer afternoon, and the sun bathed our quiet neighborhood in a warm, golden glow. My parents as usual were on their jobs and I was left alone in our cozy home as it was the summer vacation time. With a sense of security that came from living in a close-knit community, I decided to take a much-needed nap to catch up on some lost sleep from my busy week doing charity service. I settled into my comfortable bed, the curtains drawn to keep the bright sunlight at bay. As I began to drift into slumber, the peaceful stillness of the house wrapped around me like a comforting blanket. The distant chirping of birds outside seemed to serenade me into a peaceful nap. It was in this tranquil state, on the brink of sleep, that I heard it, a faint jingle of keys followed by the soft click of the front door shutting. My eyes snapped open, and I bolted upright in bed. The haze of sleep vanished in an instant as my heart raced with sudden alarm. In a daze, I called out my parents' names, assuming they had returned earlier than expected. My voice was groggy laced with sleep, but there was no response. Panic began to claw at the edges of my consciousness as I realized that my parents' car was not in the driveway. They were still away at their respective jobs. With each passing second, the pit in my stomach deepened, and a dreadful certainty washed over me. Someone else had entered our home. The intruder was inside. My mind raced as I tried to collect my thoughts and devise a plan. I knew I had to act quickly and cautiously. I couldn't risk alerting the intruder to my presence, nor could I remain passive while they rifled through our belongings. I slipped out of bed as quietly as possible, my bare feet padding across the cool, wooden floor. The house, which had once felt like a sanctuary, now seemed like a labyrinth of shadows and uncertainty. I had to tread carefully. I tiptoed through the dimly lit hallway, my senses on high alert. The intruder's presence in the living room was unmistakable. I could hear the rustling of papers and the faint clinking of objects being moved. Each step I took felt like an eternity, and my heart hammered in my chest, threatening to give me away. As I peered around the corner, I caught my first glimpse of the intruder, a shadowy figure hunched over, engrossed in their illicit search. Panic tightened its grip on me, but I knew that I had to keep my composure. My thoughts raced searching for a way to outweave this unwelcome guest. Then, a memory surfaced, a memory of my parents telling me about the spare key hidden in a potted plant outside. It was a precaution in case we ever got locked out. The key was my lifeline now. I needed to get outside, retrieve that key, and secure the intruder inside until help arrived. Carefully, I began to backtrack, retracing my steps down the hallway. My mind was a whirlwind of thoughts but I knew that I had to remain silent. My every movement had to be calculated and deliberate. As I reached the front door, my hand trembling, I turned the knob with excruciating slowness, praying that it wouldn't creak. The door opened soundlessly, revealing the bright, sunlit exterior. The sight of the serene, sun-drenched neighborhood was a stark contrast to the tense atmosphere inside. I stepped onto the porch, taking a moment to steady myself. The potted plant where the spare key was hidden stood near the door, its vibrant green leaves providing a stark contrast to the turmoil within me. My fingers reached inside the soil, and I felt the cool, metallic touch of the key. Withdrawing it carefully, I held it in my hand like a talisman, a key to safety and security. But the toughest part was yet to come. I had to return inside, 
lock the intruder in, and call the police. It was a daunting task, and fear gnawed at the edges of my resolve. I took a deep breath, steeling myself for what lay ahead. As I re-entered the house, I moved with quiet determination, my footsteps barely making a sound on the hardwood floor. The intruder remained engrossed in their illicit task, oblivious to my presence. With a trembling hand, I inserted the spare key into the lock and turned it slowly, hearing the reassuring click as the door locked behind me. I had sealed the intruder inside. Now, I needed to make the call. I reached for my phone, my fingers shaking as I dialed 911. The voice on the other end was a lifeline, a reassuring presence in the midst of my fear. I whispered the details, trembling as I recounted the situation to the dispatcher. It seemed like an eternity as I waited for the police to arrive. My heart pounded in my chest, and my mind raced with a mix of fear and relief. Would the intruder try to escape? Would they discover that I had locked them in? The minutes stretched on, and every creak of the floorboards felt like a thunderclap in the stillness. Finally, the distant wail of sirens pierced the air, drawing closer with each passing moment. The sound was a beacon of hope, a promise that help was on its way. I waited anxiously by the front door, my pulse quickening as the police cars pulled up to our house. The officers arrived, their presence a reassuring sight. They moved with quiet professionalism, instructing me to stay outside as they entered the house. I watched with bated breath as they apprehended the intruder, who had been caught off guard by my unexpected actions. It turned out to be a desperate thief, driven to extreme measures by circumstances unknown. The police assured me that they would handle the situation from there, and I felt a wave of relief wash over me. I had thwarted a potential disaster with quick thinking and the presence of mind to use the spare key. As the officers escorted the intruder away in handcuffs, I couldn't help but reflect on the events of that day. The house, once a sanctuary of security, had been invaded by an unknown threat. But I had risen to the occasion, facing my fear with courage and determination. In the days that followed, I realized the importance of being prepared and resourceful in moments of crisis. The hidden spare key, a seemingly trivial precaution, had become my lifeline. It served as a reminder that sometimes, in the most unexpected of situations, quick thinking and the ability to stay calm under pressure can make all the difference. That summer afternoon had turned into a harrowing experience, but it had also taught me a valuable lesson about resilience and the strength that lies within us when faced with adversity. The forgotten spare key, once overlooked, had become a symbol of my ability to protect my home and secure my safety in the face of danger. Being home alone had never been a source of discomfort for me as my parents have been on to many business trips over the time, so I had gotten quite accustomed to it. Our cozy family house, nestled on a peaceful suburban street, had always provided a sense of security and warmth. But that fateful night would change everything, shattering my sense of safety and plunging me into a world of unexplainable terror. I had settled on the couch, cocooned in a blanket, engrossed in the pages of a captivating novel. The room was bathed in the soft glow of a reading lamp, and the only sounds were the occasional turning of a page and the faint ticking of a nearby clock. The night was still young, and I relished the solitude, finding comfort in the familiar creaks and groans of our aging house. As I read, I was transported to the world of the story, the characters coming to life in my mind. It was during this immersion into fiction that I first heard it, a low, eerie whisper, barely audible but undeniably present. It was a sound that sent a shiver down my spine, like the murmur of a ghostly presence. At first, I dismissed it as a trick of my imagination, a byproduct of my deep engagement with the book. But the whispers persisted, growing louder and more insistent with each passing moment. I couldn't ignore them any longer. The hair on the back of my neck stood on end as I realized that the source of the whispers was not my own mind, but something else entirely. Caution tinged with fear guided my movements as I set the book aside and rose from the couch. I followed the eerie sound, my heart pounding with each step. It seemed to emanate from behind one of the living room walls, a disconcerting notion that sent chills down my spine. With trembling hands, I approached the wall, my breath caught in my throat. The whispers, though still incomprehensible, seemed to beckon me, urging me to investigate. 
I pressed my ear against the cool surface, straining to make out the words. They were unintelligible, like a foreign language I couldn't understand, filled with an otherworldly cadence. Fear gnawed at my insides as I realized that someone, or something, was on the other side of that wall. The very idea was enough to send a surge of adrenaline coursing through my veins. I took a step back, my mind racing with questions and doubts. In that moment, I had a choice. I could flee the house, seek refuge with a neighbor, and call the police, or I could confront the source of the eerie whispers head on. My sense of responsibility and curiosity combined, compelling me to unravel the mystery. I decided to investigate. My first instinct was to locate the point from which the whispers emanated. The walls held the secrets, and I had to uncover them. I knew that confronting whatever was behind this unsettling phenomenon was the only way to regain control of my own home. Swiftly, I retrieved a flashlight from a nearby table, my hand gripping it tightly as if it were my lifeline. The beam of light cut through the darkness as I approached the wall once more, my heart pounding like a drum. I had to find out what was happening. With caution and trepidation, I began knocking on the wall, each rap growing louder and more insistent. Who's there? I called out, my voice quivering but determined. The whispers on the other side responded, growing frantic and agitated. The tension in the room became palpable, like a coiled spring ready to snap. I knew I had to press on. My flashlight swept the surface of the wall illuminating the wallpaper and the intricate patterns it held. But the whispers remained an enigma, their source still concealed within the structure of the house. With trembling hands, I began to explore the wall more thoroughly. The idea of tearing it open felt both absurd and terrifying, but it was my only option. I needed to know what lay beyond, what sinister force was hiding just out of sight. I selected a small section of wallboard, my fingers gripping the edge and I began to pry it away with a sense of trepidation. The material resisted at first, but as I persisted, it relented, revealing a hidden crawl space beneath. My heart raced as I shone the flashlight into the narrow opening. The space was just large enough for someone to hide, its walls lined with dusty insulation and cobwebs. It was a chilling discovery, one that sent a surge of fear coursing through me. I had found the source of the whispers, but the question remained, where was the one who had been speaking? My flashlight's beam swept the crawl space, but it was empty. There was no sign of anyone or anything lurking within. The whispers had ceased, leaving me with an unshakable feeling of dread and confusion. As I stared into the dark void of the crawl space, I couldn't help but wonder if what I had experienced was a product of my imagination or something far more inexplicable. It was a night that defied rational explanation, a night when the walls themselves seemed to hold secrets beyond the realm of comprehension. With a heavy heart and a sense of unease that clung to me like a shadow, I replaced the section of wallboard, sealing the crawl space once more. The whispers had vanished, leaving me with more questions than answers. In the days that followed, I wrestled with the unsettling memories of that night. Had it been a manifestation of my own fears, or had I truly encountered something otherworldly? The whispers in the walls remained a mystery, a chilling reminder that even within the confines of our own homes, there are forces and phenomena that defy explanation. 